Um, Iris Marion Young is the greatest. She is just the absolute best and I love her so much. And I think anyone who's interested in philosophy, political theory, feminism needs to be reading her work. So I think after this, you need to go away and get one of her books and start reading because um, she's just so brilliant. Well, that's quite an endorsement, right? <laughs> from... <laughs> yeah. I mean, a bit about who she was. So um, she was born in 1949 and she died in 2006. She was only 56. So it was a big loss for the political theory community. Um, the breadth of her research and her contribution was just so massive. She seemed to intervene in every area of contemporary political theory, um, justice theory, democracy, feminist phenomenology, Marxist feminism, um, you know, and her later work on structural injustice and global political issues. She really just came in, said amazing things, and then moved on to another area of political theory. So it was a very impressive career that she had. Um, and I think at the time she was an academic star at the time, well, at least after her 1990 book, Justice and the Politics of Difference came out, that made a huge intervention in political philosophy. Um, but it's really like in the last sort of 15 years that she's, her work's taken on a life of its own and she's become, she's almost part of the canon now. There's a lot more people who would consider themselves Iris Murray and Young scholars. Um, she has that kind of gravitas that, um, yeah, she's just sort of developed that in recent years. I got involved in activism when I was 15. I joined some the anti-sweatshop protests in Belfast, um, you know, going to various corporate places that I won't name, getting dragged out by the police, that kind of thing. And that to me, and then getting involved in kind of ultra-globalization movements more generally, that to me was what global justice was about, right? And nobody in the philosophy literature was talking about that. Yeah. And then I read Iris Young's 2006 essay um, about global labor injustice. And suddenly it was like, oh my God, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been waiting for. She attaches global justice to the anti-sweatshop movement. So she takes the anti-sweatshop movement as her starting point. She says, you know, why are these people protesting? They're so far removed from the sweatshop workers in other countries. You know, on normal theories of responsibility, we would think we don't have any responsibility for those people. Uh, we're not really connected to them in a way that um, moral philosophy can understand, that can make sense of. And she wanted to make sense of this sense of responsibility that these protesters had. And that's what she was doing when she started thinking about structural injustice and our responsibility for structural injustice. And this really, yeah, this just lit a fire for me and um, has kept me interested ever since, really.